Despite wrestling being predetermined, certain elements of wrestling must be executed perfectly in order for wrestlers not to be seriously injured. This extends to the in-ring work itself and the moves in the matches, but also in relation to whenever weapons are incorporated into a match. Wrestling fans have always loved matches that involve weapons such as ladders, steel chairs and tables have been fan favourites for decades. From the iconic hardcore matches in ECW to the TLC matches in the early 2000s, wrestling fans have often wondered, are the chairs actually made of steel or is the barbed wire actually real barbed wire? Well, you might be surprised. When it comes to weapons, you would be shocked to learn that the vast majority of weapons used are 100% real. What the hell Morrison has got in my head? Oh my God! But with that being said, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE weapons and their secrets exposed. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. Number 1. Tables Since the inception of the tables match in WWE at the Royal Rumble 2000 when the Hardy Boys would face off against the Dudley Boys, the tables match has become one of the WWE's most popular match types. Introducing a table into a match has become a surefire way to get the crowd instantly invested in the match and a wrestler being put through a table will indeed get one of the biggest reactions of the entire show. As for the tables themselves, they are made from extremely thin chipboard, meaning they can barely maintain the weight of a single human being. Therefore, when someone falls or goes through the table, it instantly implodes, making an explosive noise in the process. The table is one of the safest weapons in wrestling, mainly because there isn't too much additional pain for the wrestlers to take. After all, it's just a small amount of chipboard they are falling through. Although we must admit that the metal poles holding up the table may cause some damage. It has also been known for tables not to break on occasion. This is usually when the wrestler doesn't land in the middle of the table, which can look kind of awkward on television and usually means the wrestler has to be put through the table again. As for the Japanese table, well, those are normally actually made out of real wood, hence why they never break. Number 2. Kendo Sticks The kendo stick has become one of the most popular weapons in modern WWE. This is mainly because it's one of the safest and the risk of injury from a blow from the weapon is extremely low. The kendo stick itself is made from hollow wood and breaks apart after just a few strikes. The tape on both sides of the sticks allows the stick to stay together for a few shots without breaking off into little pieces which could seriously injure someone. The dangers of the kendo stick can be seen when watching the WWE One Night Stand pay per view in 2008 when the Big Show was seriously injured by a defective kendo stick. Recently though the kendo stick has somewhat become forever damaged as a threatening and imposing weapon following the infamous Bailey vs Alexa Bliss kendo stick on a pole match that did no favours for the aura around the weapon or the two women in the match itself. Number 3. The Garbage Can The garbage can is actually one of the weapons that is completely different from the traditional garbage can you see lying around your home. The ones featured on WWE television are made out of aluminum or tin, this means the can itself is no thicker than a can of soda or beer. This means the can does little to no damage on the wrestler being hit by it, which is always a good result when it comes to a weapon used in wrestling. Surprisingly, it can actually help a move be less painful for a wrestler to take. For instance, when Shane McMahon hits the coast to coast, the garbage can he uses softens the blow for the wrestler, meaning they get a cushioned impact rather than the full force of Shane McMahon crashing into them at boot first. Number 4. Thumbtacks Thumbtacks, to the surprise of many, are actually the real deal. Thumbtacks don't need much of an explanation as the consequences of a wrestler coming into contact with the tacks is quite self-explanatory. As soon as a wrestler takes a move on the unforgiving tacks, damage is instantly noticeable and this is usually followed by blood and agony. Thumbtacks were extremely common in ECW and then later in the Attitude Era in matches featuring Mick Foley. They would slowly disappear from WWE television following WWE reverting back to a very PG product. However, they would make a rare appearance at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view in 2016 in a match between Dean Ambrose and Chris Jericho. 
Jericho, who took a bump in the tax for the first time in his career, stated that the anticipation for the bump in the tax was worse than the actual bump itself. Mick Foley would reveal a little trick when he stated that if the bump is taken on a large surface area such as the back, the pain is quote unquote less severe as it spreads it out. He also mentioned taking the tax out is actually much worse, and the pain resides for several days. Number 5. Barbed Wire The usage of barbed wire in WWE is actually quite complex as they vary when they use real genuine barbed wire or they opt for fake barbed wire for the safety of the wrestlers in the match. Notably, in Mick Foley's autobiography, he discussed his match with Triple H at the 2000 Royal Rumble. The match itself heavily features a 2x4 wrapped in barbed wire. Foley revealed that real barbed wire was used whenever Triple H would use the barbed wire bat on him, however when Triple H would be hit with a bat, fake barbed wire would be used. It's unknown just how fake the less than genuine barbed wire is, but speculation suggests that if fake barbed wire is used, the tips of it are rubber, meaning the wrestler won't be seriously hurt. On occasion, wrestlers opt to use the genuine stuff for dramatic effect. For instance, Batista in his Hell in a Cell match in 2005 against Triple H opted to use the genuine barbed wire to get the best results possible. Number 6. The Guitar the guitar is a weapon made famous by Jeff Jarrett. His trademark guitar was often used as a weapon to smash over his opponent's head. The spot in question where Jarrett would hit someone with a guitar would always look great on television because the guitar would explode on the person's head and make a loud noise which looked incredibly effective. But the guitars themselves are actually genuine guitars, however they are shaved off completely on the inside making them incredibly light and incredibly breakable the moment they are smashed over a wrestler's head. Now we all know what you're thinking, well the case where Jake Roberts was hit over the head with a guitar by the honky tonk man was actually a solid guitar, hence his real life injury. Jake Roberts once told in a shoot interview that the person who was in charge of getting the guitar was Pat Patterson's partner. Well, that guy went to a guitar shop and thought, well, Vince would want the best. So they got a proper guitar, man. Number 7. Glass Whenever you see a wrestler go through a glass window on WWE television or be hit with a glass object of some kind, despite the sound and damage looking very similar to the impact that would come from the damage of normal glass, it is in fact sugar glass. Sugar glass is completely safe to use, well, when used in the correct capacity, that is. Despite glass in the WWE being extremely safe, disaster would strike in the match between Kurt Angle and Shane McMahon at the 2001 King of the Ring. In one of the most brutal matches of all time, Angle would suplex Shane through panels of glass. However, they wouldn't smash on impact, and Shane's head would bounce off the glass and land on the concrete below. It took numerous attempts for the glass to break. The reason for this is because WWE had forgotten to rig the glass and actually use plexiglass instead of the sugar glass. The match was so brutal due to the mistakes with the glass that Shane needed 50 stitches following the match. Number 8. The Sledgehammer The Sledgehammer has an interesting history in WWE. Introduced by Triple H in 1999 as his primary weapon, initially it was a fake sledgehammer that was used whenever Triple H would use the weapon on his opponents. The fake sledgehammer would contain a rubber head attached to a wooden base. The only time a real sledgehammer would be used is when Triple H would use it on something such as a casket, just as he did on an episode of Raw in 1999. The usage of the sledgehammer would drastically change forever at WrestleMania 17. This was in the match between The Undertaker and Triple H, as Triple H would hit The Undertaker with the sledgehammer head, as The Undertaker would raise Triple H up for the last ride. Unfortunately, the sledgehammer broke, which forced The Undertaker to suffer a nasty cut. From that point onwards, WWE would opt for Triple H to use a real sledgehammer. He would then proceed to use his hand to cover up the metal parts of the hammer, so no harm would be caused to the other wrestler. Number 9. Ladders Since the first ladder match in the WWE between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart in 1992, the ladder match has attained a status as one of the most popular matches in WWE history. Now the ladder is used in two instances during a match. It is used as an instrument for the wrestlers to climb to win the match, but it's also used as a weapon. This naturally means that the ladder must be strong enough to contain the body weight of wrestlers, but also safe enough to be used as a weapon. The structure of the ladder is slightly different to a traditional ladder. The steel used in the ladder is hollow, so it's lighter and it's safer to hit a fellow wrestler with. Additionally, the center of the ladder is made to be much weaker. This is for spots where a wrestler is put through a ladder, which is often seen in the Money in the Bank matches. 
Despite the ladders being made slightly differently than traditional ladders, ladder matches and then later TLC matches have caused countless injuries. For instance, the three teams who made the concept of the TLC famous, that being the Hardy Boys, Dudley Boys and Edge and Christian, who all cite the matches with ladders as reasons why they still have injuries to this very day. And number 10, Steel Chairs. The steel chair is probably the most iconic weapon in WWE history. Incorporated into several famous matches and segments throughout history, fans have often wondered if steel chairs are all that WWE makes them out to be. The fact is, the steel chairs are legit. The only difference between the chairs seen on WWE televisions and normal steel chairs is that the rivets are broken. This means that the chairs can be folded completely flat, which makes them safer to hit a fellow wrestler with. Now there was a time where wrestlers would take chair shots to the head on a regular basis, but fortunately due to research into concussions and issues relating to blows to the head, chair shots to the head have been officially banned in WWE. Former WCW World Champion Diamond Dallas Page recently discussed the dangers of the chair shot on Joe Rogan's podcast. He discussed how in preparation for the infamous Hulk Hogan and Dennis Rodman vs DDP and Karl Malone match in WCW, DDP had to explain the importance of the execution of the chair shot to Rodman. He would explain to Rodman that the steel chair must always be kept completely flat when performing a chair shot or it could end up seriously injuring a fellow wrestler. Injuries of course still happen today with chair shots, as seen when Sean Spears hit Cody over the head with one. But there you have it guys, the secrets behind WWE weapons. Did you guys know these facts? Are there any more secrets you would like us to uncover with weapons? Let us know in the comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.